Okay, folks, so the usual disclaimer. I'm just making this video for myself for as a reminder for later, but maybe somebody else finds it useful, so I'm going to post it to YouTube anyway. Um, so yeah, that's why it's not going to be like a nice slick video. I'm not going to edit it. It's going to be a bit long, a bit rambling, but um, yeah, maybe it helps somebody. Okay, so what we're gonna, what I'm going to show here is how um, the a texture gets mapped across a, a mesh, and I'm going to basically talk about the um, two ways which are generated and object, but there are other ways such as UV and camera and all kinds of other stuff. But I'm just going to keep it simple here because I think these are the most in a way, the most two important ones. So we've got a, a cube here. Let's go to, not that, let's go to uh, front view. And we're going to get rid of the principled BSDF and bring in a checker. Okay. Now, Blender has decided to put our checker texture with five checkers across. And that's basically what I'm going to talk about is why it, it does it like that um, and what it actually means. And here it says five. And if we change this to 10, it becomes 10. Yeah, but why, why is that? Why is, you know, five watt? That's the question is five watt or, or 10 watt. So I'm going to bring in another node here, which is the um, texture coordinate. And the first important thing to know is that if you don't hook this one up into here, then it will automatically be doing generated. Okay. And if I hook it in, you'll see that although it flashes, it just comes up the same as it was before. So we're looking at generated here, and this is also generated. Okay. Basically, what um, oh, and over here we need to press N to bring up this. Basically, what this five means is that um, as long as you keep the scale, uh, well, the scale here we, we need to quickly talk about this because the scale here, which is the same as the scale here, because if I change it here, it changes there as well. Undo. Basically, the scale here will just change your object scale, but after everything that's been done to it, so the textures and the UVs and, and whatever, uh, it just makes it bigger or smaller. So especially when you're learning this stuff, you really want to leave this on, on one, otherwise you're going to kind of get yourself confused. Okay. So um, basically what this number means is it's going to um, put five, checkers across your object and because our object is two meters wide it's putting the five across and we can just check the, the size here and that's two meters okay so we, you can say well, that's simple you know whatever is here uh you divide that by this and then you get one check is 40 centimeters. So five times 40 centimeters is two meters. Okay. But that's not quite the whole story because what it's actually, what it actually means, it's going to put five, not across this object, but across the bounding box. Okay. So what is the bounding box? Well, let's turn off this cube for a second. Bring up a, uh, an icosphere and let's apply the same, whoops, the same, material to it. Okay. So this looks a little bit different in a way. Um, it's not quite so clear cut because it's, you've got these weird stuff happening, but if you actually look, look at across the objects, because we're looking in an orthographic view here, this is the front view orthographic. You'll see that we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We have five checkers going across, even though they're a bit messed up. They're actually five. The scale is five. Okay. And I don't know why this is, this is, that should be like that. Um, okay. Now, if we go to viewport display and then turn on bounds, all of a sudden we get this nice uh, box. 
And that's the bounding box. Okay. And basically, so what this number means is it's going to put five checkers across your bounding box. If we go back to the cube and select it, we also have a bounding box, but the problem is you can't see it because the bounding box is exactly the same shape as the cube. So for now, let's stick with the, um, the icosphere. It's a bit easy to see. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select um, these two. And I'm going to go back into front view. Now I'm going to drag these to the left. I'm going to scale just these on the x-axis. Okay. Now, this is a really key point to, to know, is that until we press tab, until we exit edit mode, we don't actually see what we have. Okay. So just make a mental note here. If I count across, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost nine uh, checkers across. Okay. Now I'm going to tab out. And now you can see that's changed. Now, if I count again, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So here, the scale is five checkers across our bounding box. Okay. That's what this actually means. Okay. Back into front view. And because our bounding box on the z-axis is um, not changed, therefore our squares are no longer squared or rectangles because it's been stretched. The bounding box has been stretched in this axis, but not in this axis. Okay. If I was to go back to edit mode, select this vertices, and then back into front view, and let's now drag this one up by pressing G. And then Z will lock it to the vertical axis, Z axis. We'll see the same thing again. We'll see if we count, we've got uh, roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. But we have to now exit edit mode to actually see what we've got. Okay. And now again, we have one, two, three, four, five. And if we go back into edit mode, you'll see that it's it doesn't. Uh, change back again. So maybe this is a bug in Blender. I'm not sure. Um, but that's just, that really confused me because there was a, there's a really great video on YouTube where this guy explains this, but this is the one thing he doesn't cover. And that got me totally confused because he was, he was changing the scale in edit mode and it wasn't doing what I, I it, it wasn't doing what he explained it should be doing. So it, he was explaining it, but he wasn't like noticing that it wasn't actually happening because he wasn't ex ex exiting edit mode. Okay, so the question is, how does the texture coordinates map the texture across the bounding box when it's in generated mode? And to show that I've got an icosphere over here and we're, displays, we're displaying its bounding box, but I'm actually going to turn off its bounding box because I'm simulating it with a cube wireframe here. So this is exactly the same size uh, cube as the, as the bounding box of the archosphere. And what the, what the texture coordinate does is it looks at this bounding box, which has got eight vertices, and it looks at all eight vertices and it says, which of these vertices is the most minus X, most minus Y, and most minus Z, which is this one here. So basically it's the Vert vertex, which is the front, left, bottom vertex. And it, it maps the texture across from there, across to the opposite corner here. And I can easily show that if I turn these off and I turn on this cube here, which I've mapped. Let's just select it. Let's go out of edit mode and select it. And now we can see it's got this material on it, which is a color ramp. And this, you can see that the color ramp is starting here 
in this bottom left front corner and it's mapping it all the way to the opposite corner up here. So you can see that's basically how it maps across the bounding box from bottom front left to top back right. The important thing to know is that the uh, bound, the bounding box, and this is uh, this is I think also called the texture space. Let's just have a look. Um, let's select this. So object transform. Okay, um, look, move texture space. So now you can see. that this is the only way to change that um, so maybe I should just quickly lastly explain that the the bounding box is just the, the smallest possible uh, rectangle rectangular box that can encapsulate every part of the mesh okay so if we to look here and we to go this way and the bounding box has got to change size Okay, exit. And what you can do here with a transform um, <clears throat> move texture space is you can actually move it. I have no idea why you would need to do that, but you can do that. So now, and it chooses for some reason to show you the original and the moved texture space. Okay. Just gonna delete this and this. Let's bring in a new cube. Okay, and one other, one other thing I want to show is if I now move the the uh, cube. Like let's say put it here. You can see that we no longer have um, like an even, it's not evenly distributed. But again, it's, it's just that thing of we're in edit mode. If we exit edit mode and then go back in, in or out, you can see that it's now yeah even again because again, the bounding box has automatically moved to fit the new location of the, of the mesh. So, yeah, that covers it for uh, generated. Okay, so let's start talking about the using the object output of the texture coordinate node. So, we'll remember that when we use generated, what it does is it looks at the size of the bounding box. It starts in the bottom right front corner, and it maps it across from there. And if this is set to scale of five, it will give us five checkers across the bounding box. And if the bounding box is bigger, remember we have to exit edit mode. Then we see still five checkers because it's just mapping them across the bounding box. Let's just delete that. Okay, object mode. We'll see immediately that we've got twice as many checkers. Now, why is that? The easiest way to explain is by setting scale to one. Okay. What it's now saying here is it's saying, give us one checker for every blender unit of distance. And a blender unit of distance is one meter. There we go. One meter right here. If I had to put this up to five, then we see that we've got one, two, three, four, five across one meter. Okay. And in contrast to generated, if I was to go into edit mode, change the scale. and exit, it doesn't snap the way it generated did to a different view because 
um, Blender doesn't care. It's still saying, give us five checkers over one Blender unit. It doesn't care how big your object is. It will just still keep the size of the checkers the same. Okay. Now remember, again, as a quick reminder, this is not the case when you scale it up at the sort of macro object mode, because when you do that, you're just saying, take my object, where, however it is, whatever it looks like, and just scale it, scale everything about it. Okay. Now, the other main difference is that in contrast to the, in, with the other main difference to generated is that in contrast to generated, where it's chose to start the texture at the bottom corner, in object mode, it starts it from the origin point, which is here. Okay. So what's happening is it's, it's saying, go off in this direction and give me um, five checkers per meter and give me five per meter in this direction as well. Okay. We can easily check that. If I was to grab my 3D cursor and plop it down here. Okay. And if I was to now move the origin point to here, we would expect this to be the start point of our checkers. We can easily do that by going up to object, set origin, set origin to 3D cursor. Okay. And now we see that here, it has done exactly that. It's now starting the, um, the checker from this point. And if we go into edit mode, select all and move our object, you can see that again, Blender doesn't care about that. It only cares where's the origin point and it locks the locks the texture to that point starting from there. Yeah, so I think that pretty much covers it. Maybe that clears that up, clears things up for some people and have a nice day.